Hello beauties, it's Brittany. I am sitting in my living room today. I really want to start to recording in other spaces of my house other than just in the like room slash studio slash office um, that I have. I am sitting here, let me show you who is next to me. My little puppy Pepper with me. Bean is over by the other window. But Pepper is joining me. I'm suffering from a little bit of a cold, so if I sound a little different, that is why. So I thought it might be fun today to talk about the things that hot yoga has taught me that I have kind of transitioned and brought those learnings into my real life outside of the studio, off of my mat, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into those. Number one would be something that a lot of my instructors have focused on from day one is not looking at anyone else's mat and I have done a lot of my yoga flows with my eyes closed for most of the class and it's because I have this draw to look at how somebody else is doing the pose or to look at where I am compared to everybody else but yoga the practice of it is so much about not comparing yourself to others but focusing on your own practice and how the move feels to you and how the position feels to you uh, versus how it's supposed to be done cor like correctly or how somebody else next to you is doing it. And it's really challenging at a studio where you are so close to somebody physically not to judge your positioning compared to theirs, but that is definitely something that the practice of yoga has taught me. And how you kind of bring that into your real life is not comparing yourself to others if, you know, what job somebody else has, how much somebody else makes, where somebody else is traveling to, what somebody else, you know, looks like. It is so important to respect and treat others with kindness while also treating yourself with kindness and respecting your own journey and having care for your own body. Number two is noticing where you're at in a position or a pose, but not judging it as bad or good. This is something that my instructors repeat over and over again. And at the studio I go to, there's many different instructors. They kind of alternate times and classes. And I love that because life, you don't just get one person's perspective on something most of the time. You're getting, you know, a lot of different inputs. And so it's amazing to have that in my yoga practice as well. So that idea of not giving it a bad or good name tag, name print, you know, stamp is so beautiful because your right side is different than your left side. And if you practice yoga, you'll find that one position might be easier on your left or easier on your right. And it can be so easy and it happens so quickly where you just designate your left side as your bad side. That's just, I can't work that one as much because that's just my bad side. Or if you step back and you just recognize that that is a side that you need to give a little more love to. Once that kind of switch flips, it's super, super cool. And you'll find that you can get deeper into the pose and get deeper into uh, just how to respect your body. So how you could bring this into your real life is just that simple. It's noticing what's going on around you, but not immediately stamping it as bad or good. We do this in life so frequently, at least I do. It's either good or it's bad. It's yes or it's no. And I don't know why we do that. And I, it's, it's really, really difficult to switch out of that, but I think it's super, super important because once you label something that way, it makes it more difficult to change it. Where if you notice something in your life and you don't label it right away, but you process it, then you're able to come up with a plan and develop a plan for improving upon that thing. For instance, if you constantly tell yourself that you are a bad cook, then when you go to make yourself dinner, you're not going to enjoy the task. And I'm not saying we all have to become like top number one chefs, but if you go into it with that mindset of this is a bad task, I don't like this task, then ultimately it is going to be bad. But if you go into it with the mindset of you're f fueling your body and it's something that you get to do in the day versus something you have to do, then I think that's kind of where that transition happens. Pepper is still lying here so sweetly with me and I love it. And Bean is transitioned to chewing on her bone, which I hope you cannot hear. Okay, number three is really deep. And my instructor said this the other day and it 
blew my mind. We were doing, I think, like crow pose, which is quite difficult and takes a lot of balance and strength. And it's very easy to get down on yourself when you're trying to do something like that. And she said that if you are tight in a specific spot of your body, or if a specific pose is difficult because of, you know, your shoulders hurt or your knees hurt or your hip hurts, that it is due to the fact that we all have energy. We are all made up of energy and the emotions that we feel are energy. And when you're tight in a specific spot of your body, it is that formed energy, negative or good or your past experience built up in that specific spot. And if you just soften into it and breathe and relax into it, then it is so much easier to do the pose and it feels incredible. This is what probably one of my favorite things that I've learned in my practice and what led to me choosing the word soften in being my yearly mantra. I truly believe that we are all energy and that your body holds on to those things. And when you release those things from your body, your body feels lighter and you are able to do everything in your life more simply. And number four is breath. Yoga is so much about the breath and it's a deep belly breath is what they call it. And it is feeling the breath in your belly, having your belly expand when you breathe out and contract when you breathe in and feeling it there first above your chest and oh my god it is life changing let me know if you watch this is us because i found this such in my magical connection i had just gone to a yoga class i was coming home drinking my smoothie i was watching this is us and i'm behind but there was a part where I'm not going to mention the specific characters because I don't want to spoil anything but the thing that was being said was we rush through our life so quickly and we focus so much on just getting through that we forget to take time to focus on the thing that keeps us alive. It's so cheesy but it's so magical and it's really taught me that my breath has the power to alter my mood, to bring me into a pose, to help me get out of a pose, to help me soften into anything in my life. And this lesson that I've learned of breath is something I'm hoping that I can really bring into every single aspect of my life and that I can focus on a lot more. And I hope that if this video teaches you anything, offers you any kind of advice, it is to take 30 seconds today, put your hand on your stomach and practice that deep belly breath. And there's a lot of different ways that you can recenter your breath. If you, I'm sure just search on YouTube, a lot of my instructors have done different exercises in class that help you focus on altering your breath and changing your breath. Um, one of them is like a nostril motion that helps you breathe in one nostril and out and then in the other and out that one and it's focusing on you know your right side of your brain and your left side of your brain and re reconnecting the two it's absolutely incredible what the breath can do and it's such a thing that we take for granted and now the dogs are wrestling oh bye pep and number five, and something I mentioned earlier in the video, is the idea of softening. And this is a lot, all of these are a lot of what yoga is about to me. And this whole idea of softening is incredible. And being a softer human, I think, means a lot of things. This idea of to soften can mean so many things. I think it can mean to just be a softer human in the world, to give more, to relax more into your life, into other people's existence in the world, to your energy. It can mean to just melt in a little bit more to things, to relax into things. So the practice of yoga has taught me to be a softer human to myself, to others, to my sweet baby dogs. Oh my God. My nose is truly starting to run away from me, so I have to wrap this video up. To sum up what I've learned in my yoga practice in just this short while is to one, 
not to look at other people's mats and not compare myself to other people. Two is not to judge where I am at as bad or good or yes or no or correct or incorrect. It is what it is and I need to develop a plan to improve where I feel I need to improve. Three, when you have tightness and a pose in your body, in your chest, in your heart, it is due to not letting go and to having built up energy in a way that is not serving you. Mwah. I kiss you on the head, hello. Oh my bean. Bean, I know you want to play, but mama's in the middle of something. Number four, your breath is literally magical. It is a miracle and every single day, and I encourage you, any time, 30 seconds that you have in the day, physically put your hands on your body, on your belly, on your chest, and feel the breath that fills your body because you only get this one body. And the breath that you have in your lungs is magical. Your heart that pumps blood through your body it is an absolute miracle that it happens and that we're here. And that, oh, blows my mind. And number five is just to soften. Soften into who you are as a human. Soften into the world. Be softer to other people. Be softer to yourself. I mean, a world where this exists is a magical, magical place. Well, I hope you enjoyed me filming in a different space today. It's good to have a different energy, a different space, a different mindset. So, uh, and I hope you enjoyed seeing my dogs. If you didn't, I don't know if I can fully trust you as a human. So if you've ever thought about yoga and were nervous about doing it, I really, really encourage you to try a few classes. I definitely uh, prefer hot yoga just because I like to sweat it out, but whatever you want to do to feel in tune to your body respect that and love that and i hope to see you all very soon in my next video please like this video i have a new year's goal of reaching 75,000 subscribers so if you would help me to reach that goal i would greatly appreciate it you could click the subscribe button down below and i will see you very soon in my next video bye guys <laughs>